man has been out for 11 weeks, and when he comes back, they'll have three games. Skip, he's going to come back and do what? To me, even if he comes back, what kind of shape is he going to be in? You're going to build a winner around Zion. Can you trust him to be your franchise guy? How'd that work with CP3? How'd that work with AD? It seems like it's no end in sight. 114 games in four years. He doesn't even play half the season. They keep getting setback after setback after is this it set back? I would actually consider trading him this offseason, to be honest with you. What are you going to get in return? I haven't seen this guy healthy for a full season. And he goes through another year of not really playing a lot. Probably it is time to move on, right? Now, is it New York? Is it Chicago? Is it Boston? Is it L.A.? Can we really count on this guy? Mm. Can we? I'm out. <laughs> I give up. What is going on with the best NBA prospects since perhaps LeBron James? We were having that debate when Zion was drafted, and after he was drafted, he has proven to be nothing short of what we can possibly consider the number one most confusing young prospect in the game of basketball. And the decision on what the Pelicans should do with Zion is right now easily the most important and impactful decision that can be made in the entire league. When he is on the court, Zion Williamson is nothing short of a young superstar. But the problem is, how often is he on the court? And so that means the question must be asked. Due to the Pelicans' success without Zion, due to the fact that they have a young star in Brandon Ingram, should the Pelicans cut early and trade Zion before a potential injury slash financial disaster and reap the benefits of a gigantic trade package coming back? Or should New Orleans take the risk on their young injury plague star and hope he is able to fight through this and realize his ridiculous potential? What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are looking at what is happening with Zion Williamson because at his absolute best, Zion is a megastar. And he is also a player that has proven that despite his injuries, well, his on-court production can only be described as historic. In his first two seasons, Zion averaged a combined 25.7 points, seven rebounds, and 3.2 assists per game, while he also shot a casual 60% from the field. Taking a look at every single player that has averaged at least 25 points, seven rebounds, and three assists per game in their first two combined seasons in the league. We have just four names. Elgin Baylor, Oscar Robertson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and the first name in 50 seasons, Zion Williamson. Zion's name is really on this list, which means he has to be worth taking the risk, right? But what about what NBA history tells us? We're going to get into that because there are cases that are very, very similar to Zion's that have already played out throughout recent NBA history, and some of them have ended in Utter destruction. But guys, before we continue, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, a long friend of this channel, DraftKings. Because of course, as we continue on, as each round passes, the field of teams is getting smaller, we are closer to a champion, and there has been no shortage of upsets. And as the stakes continue to get higher and higher for each team, DraftKings Sportsbook is upping the stakes for new customers. That is right, DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you guys up. New customers bet just $5 on any pregame money line wager and receive one $150 in bonus bets if that bet hits. And if you're wondering what you could use those bonus bets on, you can try parlaying multiple tournament games together all in one bet so that you have a chance at bigger winnings. And if mobile sports betting is not yet in your state, do not worry. You can still get in the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where they offer cash prizes for nearly every sport. Which means right now, go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code CORZEMBA, bet $5 on any pregame money line wager, and get $150 dollars in bonus bets if your bet hits. Thank you again to DraftKings Sportsbook for sponsoring today's video. For now, let's get back into the video. We also have to consider the opposite end of Zion Williamson himself, because let's flash back to December 9th of this year, where the Pelicans were playing the Phoenix Suns, and as you could see, after a dominant performance, Zion rubbed it in. It's over. Pels. No, no, no. Get it done. And on the spin and the reverse, the slam by Zion. So Zion gets it on the 360. 
to close it out. The Phoenix Suns felt it was totally unnecessary. And after this game, the New Orleans Pelicans were in first place. They also proceeded on December 11th to beat the Suns again as Zion backed up everything with a 35.8 rebound performance. Only after that game on December 11th, the Pelicans would proceed to lose four straight games. Zion would miss the next three, play in just four more, lose the last two of those games. And since then, Zion has not played since January 2nd. His New Year's resolution was to play one NBA game. Nailed it. He's been out since. We also cannot forget the New York Knicks drama. I know it's been swept under the rug. I know. But remember what Mark Spears tweeted out after the NBA draft lottery. Zion Williamson was quickly whisked out of the room after Pelicans were announced the winner of the draft lottery. Source said the former Duke star was rooting to go to New York. If Zion didn't also show up last year 300 pounds and then spent the entire season in Oregon, somehow unable to contact anyone, I feel like this off-court stuff has to be kept in mind when you add in the injuries, especially because all was forgiven due to the fact that Zion came back and was playing incredible basketball. But now again, he isn't. As an overall player in the games he did play in year four, Zion was still playing at a historic pace. His averages of 26 points, seven rebounds, and four assists per game in year four have only been done by seven other players throughout league history, and every name on this list is a giant one. It does have to be kept in mind, though, that Zion is not currently in the top 20 in the league in win shares per 48 minutes, a stat that we can use even with his injuries, and also his box score plus minus, another stat we can use, would rank him just 16th in the league in front of Demonis Sabonis. The point I'm trying to make is not that Zion is not an elite player. What I'm trying to say is that in year four, he's no longer, at least in these categories, on that transcendent superstar type path. Meanwhile, the Pelicans core has certainly proven itself to be one of the most competitive teams in the NBA when healthy and even when they are not. They certainly have been hanging in there. This season, the Pelicans have played in 77 games and are 39 and 38 in an intensely competitive Western Conference, despite Zion playing in just 29 games and Brandon Ingram playing in just 40. Remember, back on December 8th. It was the New Orleans Pelicans who for the first time since 2008 were the number one team in the entire Western Conference. 2008. Again though, that really raises the question, is the talent they currently have enough if they choose to build around Brandon Ingram and move Zion? Because they certainly will get a big time package back in return. Or at the end of the day, is it best for the Pelicans to take that ultimate chance and bet on a potential haul of fame talent. It is here where we can actually look at NBA history and find pieces from a lot of similar situations to really get a solid opinion on what we think the Pelicans should do. Because right here, we do have four examples of what I'll call contract destruction. Four contracts that were eventually going to ruin teams in Andrew Bynum, Grant Hill, Amari Stoudemire, and John Wall. Three of these teams traded away the contracts before it was too late. Bradley Beal suffered the fate of John Wall's contract. It also has to be noted that Amari did force his way to New York, but all four of these cases are great overall case examples of what a giant contract can do to a team if that player's career ends up getting heavily, heavily affected by injuries. On the other side though, we do have four times recently that teams have waited and then it paid off to varying degrees. I mean, at the end of the day, not every single team can win the title, but after betting on Joel and Bede's injuries, the 76ers have been in the running year in and year out. And Choosing Embiid has definitely been a better choice than choosing Ben. Steph Curry had a lot of ankle injuries early on, and Monte Ellis could have been the decision to go with. Back in 2010, Monte Ellis averaged 25 and a half points per game at the age of 24. The Warriors luckily waited on their superstar. The Pelicans are in the nice predicament of what to do right now with Zion because of their incredibly quick and efficient rebuild due to their choice to wait through Anthony Davis's injuries at the time. And the Clippers had the lob City era with Blake Griffin. They may have left something on the table, but overall, these four teams definitely do not regret their decisions. As for the destructive contracts, well, it needs to be kept in mind right now. Zion Williamson is the Pelican's salary cap if they keep him. He is on the final season of his rookie deal. Next year, his five-year max of at least $193 million kicks in. This is the moment to do something. If the Pelicans were to move Zion right now, they would get an incredible 
incredible, incredible trade package back. It is known throughout the league that teams are willing to take the risk on Zion. But if the injuries continue to pile up, even one more year of this, we have seen that switch flip very quickly and suddenly nobody wants to take that risk. It has certainly happened. Melo's years on the Knicks were underwhelming with playoff success, due in large part to the fact that Amari Stoudemire completely fell off. As a 27-year-old in 2010, the year before he joined the Knicks, Amari played in all 82 games and averaged 23.1 points and 8.9 rebounds a game and was named to the All-NBA second team. Despite this, due to injury concerns, the Knicks could not get Amari Contracts contract insured, something that is a extremely rare, which meant it was no surprise, unfortunately, when after Amari played in 78 games in 2011 and was again second team All-NBA, he would get hurt, play in 47 games in 2012, just 29 in 2013, and by the age of 31 was averaging just 11.9 points per game and was certainly not the wingman that Melo thought he was going to be. The Lakers moved Andrew Bynum to the Sixers after Bynum played 50 or more games between 2000 2009 and 2012, was an all-star in 2012, and was also a pivotal piece of the Lakers 2009 and 2010 titles. For the Sixers, he never played a single game due to injury, and thus, the process was born. Grant Hill here is a very underrated one. Remember, Grant Hill would attempt to team up with a star in Tracy McGrady, and T-Mac would miss out on a lot of his competitive years because Grant Hill, his supposed to be star teammate, unfortunately played in just 57 games in his first four full years with the Magic. This happened between the ages of 28 and 31 for Grant Hill, his prime, which meant the Orlando Magic were stuck with this contract. However, the Detroit Pistons got Ben Wallace back when they traded away Grant Hill right before these big injuries, and the Detroit Pistons ended up winning the title in 2004. But if they had kept that Grant Hill contract, that might never have been. Actually, it certainly never would have been. So if the Pelicans made the decision right now to move Zion, we'd start seeing packages that would be a very, very interesting getting thrown at them. And so I cannot wait to see what the Pelicans do. My final verdict would be keep Zion. I would roll the dice if I was New Orleans. I would bet that what Zion can bring you, the heights as a team you can reach with Zion as your star player. But man, these injury concerns really are big concerns. And so there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel and you like today's video, it would be awesome if you subscribed and turned on post notifications. That way you never missed another video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. As always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.